I'd like to call uh, to order the meeting for the Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board for uh, January 9th, 2017. Uh, we will stand and be led by the Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. Homer Spring, followed by invocation of Mr. Al Keys. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you so much for this another new year. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we missed the brunt of the storm and no harm came to this community. We pray for your blessings this year, not only on the city, but on the county, as a st on the state, and as well as our uh, elected president. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would give us wisdom as, as we go about the business of this city. And Lord, that you would bless us in our efforts. And Lord, that we would do diligence for those things that are presented to us. And Lord, let us, let us never forget the work and the sacrifices of the men and women in uniform everywhere. So we pray for your blessings upon them for their safety and welfare as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So we uh, welcome everybody to tonight's meeting and uh, especially to the advisory board. So I know the weather and we do have a, a quorum, which we just kind of barely... Scott, so we're, we're glad we can move ahead with the, the, the business of Jacksonville. And to our viewers, uh, you know, it's good to have you on board. We weren't here last month. Uh, we didn't have any agenda, and hopefully you had good holidays and uh, Christmas and New Year's, and we wish you the best for 2017, as uh, I wish the, the board here the best and also the planning department. So uh, thank you for viewing, and uh, so we'll move ahead with tonight's meeting, and we need the approval for the agenda tonight. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda presented. Okay, we have a motion. I have a second. We have a second by Ms. Teresa. All those in favor, raise your right hand, please. Very good. Move on here. So we have a review of the minutes uh, from our last meeting, which is on November the 14th, since we did not have one in December. So is there any additions or corrections to those minutes from that meeting? Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. I Keys. move that the minutes be approved as published. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Keyes. Second. Second by Mr. Spring. Those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you so much. All right, we are now at the City Council update with uh, Bob Warden. Mr. Warden, good to see you. Thank you, sir. All right. Good evening to everybody. Happy New Year to uh, each and every one of you. Uh, the only thing that we have to report is that the City Council at their November 22nd meeting did approve the Sturgeon City and Environmental Center uh, Type 3 site plan and special use permit. I know you all passed that and so did we. So it's all we've really done. That was back in November. We didn't, as you said, uh, we didn't meet in December. It seemed like a long time ago, doesn't it? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. We have no old business this time, so we'll go ahead and move into the new business. And our first item is the Onslow Community Outreach uh, Type 3 site plan uh, with an approval for a special use permit approval. Hey, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Advisory Board, you have before you a request submitted by Onslow Community Outreach. This is a Type 3 site plan which already has an existing approved special use permit, which was approved by the City Council in April 2015. A condition of that permit was the submittal and approval of a Type 3 site plan. You'll note the location at 1210 Hargett Street on you in the vicinity map on the screen for you. This is the former site of the Piggly Wiggly. <coughs> Since its approval of the special use permit in April 2015, Onslow Community Outreach has moved forward with several improvements, although not required until if a part of this site plan, but they have site improvements. Um, so, so if any of you visited the site or driven by, you should see those. Um, the proposed site is 27,000 square feet, approximately. Um, it will be the future home of community outreach administrative offices, Christmas cheer, soup kitchen, and an area designated for the homeless shelter. 
uh, homeless shelters are a special use in the CC district. You'll see this project is zoned corridor commercial along with all the adjacent properties, including New River Apartments, New River Shopping Center, um, and the uh, various retail medical offices uh, to the west. City staff has reviewed the site plan and found that it has met all city requirements and are recommending that the Planning Advisory Board move to recommend approval. Um, Mr. Brian Jarman from John L. Pierce's office, the representative, the design professional for the applicant is here and he can answer any questions you may have regarding the site plan. And staff also will be able to answer any questions that you have regarding the special use permit, any of the procedures or the site plan that you may have. So as I understand that this is merely an update of the previous site plan. When they, uh, pro um, April 2015, when City Council approved their special use permit, right. all they had at that time was a use plan, very general, very outlined. Yes. yes. Um, you know, did not have utility layouts, contours of uh, right. the, the grading, any of the landscaping. Um, and so, over the last several months, staff has reviewed a more detailed Type Three site plan that has all that those items, including buffering um, along the side. Of the River apartments, the street lawn, uh, interior park and landscaping, and the layout for their their proposed layout for the building. While that may not be the final, they did that for dem demonstration purposes. I'd like to make a compliment to the job that the city of has done in the city of Jacksonville, and my wife and I go quite often, and and haven't been a part of this for a while. We, we look for things like site plans and the preparation, the landscaping, and we have nothing in Jacksonville to be ashamed of. I'm quite proud, and I was talking with someone about that today, I'm quite proud of what we're doing now with site plans and, and the detail that go into it to make it a quality product. I don't think anyone can complain about how it's presented because it's done professionally, and I want to compliment the, Thank you the very planners much. for that. <clears throat> Was there not a lot of resistance to having this uh, put in this area in no, the past? At, at the time when the special <coughs> use permit, uh, back in April 2015, and planning more prior to that, um, notifications were sent out as required for a special use permit. Now, for a site plan, since this is merely a ministerial at this point, uh, mailing notices are not required. Um, so. The, the issues were resolved, though, previously. That's right. Resolved? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion when it would be here. I'm sorry? I'd like to make a motion. Yes. I move that we approve the Type 3 site plan with the approved special use permit. So we have a motion by Ms. Moore to approve this as presented. Second. And we have a second by Mr. Spring. Is there any further discussion? Uh, help me out a little bit. Where, where, which way does this face the front? Which street is the the front would be Hargett Street, correct? Correct. So um, when we drive down Hargett Street and we look at this building, we're looking basically uh, the, the right hand side will be the Christmas cheer, and the left hand side will be the housing support center. Yes. Let's see if I can have the ink turned on the screen. Get up for you, but you are correct. Yeah. Standing here looking right. right. Yeah. <clears throat> it, well, I have a general clarification question. Uh, just Jeremy. a general question. Go ahead. Uh, where would the dining room be for uh, the kitchen? Is that the Christmas chair room? Is that does that become the dining room? Okay, it looked like it's going to be kind of complicated to get into. Going through the, but there's a lobby there in the in the back of the building, but I don't see. So you would come in the front door like you have for years, yeah. and then basically uh -huh. Christmas chair will be off to your right. Yeah. The administrative support will be to your left, 
and you'd go straight in to get to the food support center. There's no door there. It's a hallway. Yeah, you would just come, come down this way. Right here. Okay. okay. Right. Come in this way. Entrance this way too. Oh. So coming down the main corridor, you would yes. have to go to the side corridor. Okay, it's, it's not a big deal, but I was just trying to figure out where the dining room is. We'll break her at all. Not at yeah. all. Mark it up for you, but the yeah. screen is not working. All right, we're good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, is if this uh, motion has been presented, please raise your right hand. If it's okay. All right, that's unanimous. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to item B. Um, so we have a text amendment of the UD UDO. Yes, sir. Thank you again. Uh, this is for the Unified Development Ordinance uh, text amendment. Staff has initiated an amendment to the residential multifamily high density zoning district. In the past few month, months, uh, multiple appraisal, appraisers, financial institutions have inquired about several dwellings that we have found located in the RMF HD district. Uh, and these are single family dwellings. And currently in the RMF HD district, Single-family detached dwelling is not permitted. So our answer to those those individuals when they call and inquire, you know, generally a question they ask is if this home was damaged beyond 50% value, could they rebuild? Currently, as the ordinance is structured, no, they could not. So we have several single-family detached dwellings within the house in, in the city that are non-conforming now. So staff is is pushing forward this amendment to add single-family detached dwelling single family detached as a permitted use in the residential multifamily high density zoning district basically it's a it's a simple amendment to the use table which would change it from not permitted to permitted um, this would correct several nonconformities as they are in the city for uh, single family dwellings and staff is recommending approval of this amendment one notable area is um, Foxhorn Village. All of those houses are zoned RMF HD, and that's where we've had one or two phone calls right. from. So you can imagine there's quite a few houses there on either side of McDaniel Drive. Mm -hmm. So they would be non-conforming currently. So this would correct that issue. Mixed like that throughout the city, or, or it just happens that that area was one that had some residential homes in it that was an area zone tca the old townhouses condominiums and apartments right and primarily because of the density back then and the setbacks things like that and it just converted to the rmf hd zoning district and we believe that this was basically an error or a mission from the use table because when you look at the code it talks about single family minimum lot size already so it, everything in the code was set up for single family except the use table. That's why this text amendment is very simple tonight. It's just this table because everything else is already set up for single family to be in that zoning district. Very good. That's great. To add to that, the RMF HD adds, Ryan, like Ryan said, standards as a minimum 3,000 square foot lot. In the, in the district description, it talks about multiple housing types, including single families. So. And those minimum lot, lot sizes already exist, you said. That's right? correct. To answer any more questions. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, approve the UDO text amendment found on attachment A. So we have a motion by Mr. Spring to, to approve this uh, request. Second it. We have a second by Mr. Keyes. Do have any further discussion from the uh, advisory committee? Hearing none, those in favor, raise your right hand, please. That's unanimous. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Uh, we're going to move on to item C. That's the uh, City uh, Council Summit with the Boards and Commissions. Good evening, Chairman, Board Members. Um, item C before you this evening is a basically a recap and also part of the assignment that we, uh, we have for the Boards and Commissions um, moving forward. So to kind of bring everybody up to speed, I know that we had uh, quite a few members that were able to attend. And um, so for those of you that were there, this will be kind of a 
you know, a recap. And those of you that, that were not able to attend, if you haven't seen it on television already, it's been on there, I know, it once or twice. And then I'll try to go over some of those items before you tonight. But we started out with kind of going over the history of Jackson being um, a caring community and what that kind of meant, how that came about, and uh, just some of the history. And one of the things that we talked about was how do we advance moving forward? And that was the focus of the, the night's um, exercise. And there was three parts, and we didn't get to the third part, but that's what we're going to kind of begin talking about tonight. So the first, the first grouping was basically the boards and commissions were um, assigned different tables, and it wasn't just the planning board and, and the community development board. It was basically everybody was kind of intermingled and intertwined. And the first part was, what have we done in the past that made us and has made us a caring community? So, you know, we went through and identified things that we believe made us a commu caring community. Uh, just kind of just remember kind of where we've been. And the second part was, what are things that we can do to advance the caring community? So we came up with ideas and strategies, and, and we talked about those and presented the items. The third part that we were not able to get to because we had such good discussion in the, the first two parts was we were going to get the boards to get together and go over with what can we do as a board and as a staff to support the board to identify certain things that we can advance moving forward. And if you'll see before you tonight on, on a te the attachment that, um, that I included, you can see a summary of the items, and it's broken down into three parts. The first part is items that are <laughs> under study, development or work by the city council or others, or appropriate for consideration by such. The second grouping was being handled by the appropriate uh, being, or is either being handled or appropriate to be handled by others, including nonprofits and other partnerships. And the third grouping was appropriate items for consideration by boards, committees, or youth council. So we're going to focus on, on the last items there on page 22, although there may be some items that we can kind of pull from the first two pages, I'm sorry, the first two groups as well. But some of the things that we talked about was uh, we had the youth council members. We had a very, um, very large number of youth council members that were in attendance, and they did a phenomenal job. And um, so you'll see that there's some, some a youth perspective that was provided. And one of the things that was talked about was high school activities that don't include or not just primarily focused around sports. You know, other activities that, that could be there for, for the non-sports playing youth. Then the other things that they talked about was having forums uh, and public events to bring awareness to things such as mental well-being, um, hypertension, diabetes, affordable housing, things like that. Then there was another, um, another one identified as increased diversity and inclusiveness in the community, uh, expand the clean and green for neighborhoods. Let's see. Opportunities for retired persons, new job requirements, and better communication of existing activities. So in the next couple of months, we need to basically focus on, is there something that we as a board can do to advance these items? Well, one of the things, if you flip back on page 21, that I want to draw your attention to, and it's, it's going to tie into what we're going to talk about with agenda item D, and that is a reference to, it's the one, two, three, four, the sixth bullet down of the second grouping. It talks about theater and arts, more cultural activities, arts and activities, et cetera. Open space art planning. Well, great timing that that came up at the meeting because we're going to talk about that in agenda item D. So I don't necessarily want the board to kind of take any action necessarily tonight, but that's something that we will advance like we're going to do with agenda item D. But if there's something on here that we can find a way to advance that caring community, that's kind of our, our goal and strategy for the upcoming year on how we advance that caring community. Um, and, you know, this was kind of just for those of you that hadn't been able to attend, these were the things that were identified 
and be thinking about those things as we move forward throughout the year on how we can advance that topic. Yes. Just on behalf of the, of the city council, um, very, very thankful for those, those uh, members, volunteers, not only this board, but all of our volunteer boards that came out and supported, supported that. One of our uh, goals, of course, is to be more responsive to the community. And so when we have these, uh, these, these community forums, and that's really what they are, uh, because we've got such a, a wide uh, spectrum of folks from across the community, sit down and tell us what's important to them, what's important to their community, and we listen, and, and it gives us some ideas, and, and certainly the staff, we have, a, as you all know, we have a great staff here at City Hall, and um, gives them a chance to hear some other ideas and, and, and kind of provides a vision for the community for, for things that we want to work on, uh, we, that we help support. So the staff and the council hear, hear the uh, concerns of the citizens, uh, hear their inputs, hear some of their visions for what they, where they think Jacksonville can go, where it can be. And the staff helps uh, plan some of these things out and, and the council gives them support by pr providing money and making priorities. So uh, just a, uh, for somebody like me who's not a really a good visionary type of person, um, it, it helps me to hear all these good ideas and, and I can then listen and say, you know, those are great ideas, something that we can do, something that we can encourage here in Jacksonville. And so uh, it really helps me do my job as a councilman and I know it does all the other council people too. So. Again, as part of, um, we thank you for, for really wanting to be a part of this community and volunteering your time. And that was just another example of what y'all do. So, so thank you. We mean that. We enjoy that communication. I mean, we, we meet with the folks, you know, all the time, but it's not often we get to meet with the, the boards and, and the community and, and get feedback on what they want to see us uh, put forward in Jacksonville. So again, thanks. Thank you, thank you, Councilman. Two other things, if you look there on page 21, one of the, actually both items have already been talked about tonight. The first bullet, increased economic development beyond retail, and look at the parentheses, appearances help. Well, this board has been instrumental, as, as Mr. Keyes stated a few minutes ago, on you know, the things that we have to help the way that the community looks, the landscaping standards and the development standards. Those are all things that the board has had a say in. And now this is kind of more focused on another <coughs> sector advancing that, but we've already kind of set the foundation as it relates to those items. And the other item is, if you look um, at further, uh, actually bullet five, expand soup kitchen and women's center. Well, we just kind of dealt with the soup kitchen and the homeless shelter just a moment ago. So even though that's kind of the nonprofit in that group's kind of item to advance, our paths kind of cross and, and it's intertwined there. So. Um, just wanted to point that out as well. So moving forward, we need to keep coming back to this. So you want to hold on to this sheet and think. I, I'm not going to expect anything out of the board tonight, but think about how we find ways to advance uh, the caring community and what we can do here as a board for that. Ryan, yes. I, 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 of course you were there, so you, you know I have a I, I don't have a dog in the fight, but I do. I was particularly vocal on my high school activities that don't include just sports. But at looking down the list, I see where it says expand cleaning green for neighborhoods. And, and I, I know you're probably saying, well, what has that got to do with caring communities? But I see places where houses that are for sale and, and need to be redone and people have put a lot of time and money into trying to make it a clean, presentable place. And I wonder how hard it is to sell someplace when the house either next door, a couple of streets down, or across the street doesn't quite, I mean, just, it, it, it's messy, you know, the one across the street. And then there are people living there. So, and I don't want to just find those people forever. I, I'd, I'd like to find some way to, to help them understand what they're doing to the rest of the neighborhood in, in a, you know. And, and one of the things that we can, we can possibly look to advance is, as a board, if you see those things, you can bring them to our attention because there may be something that we have the ability to do. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a board that helps 
you know, the eyes and the ears of the community. So if you know of some place like that, there may be already something on the books that we can use to help that scenario out. So if you see something like that, by all means, please let us know, and, and we'll get that to um, the division that, that needs to know that. Yes. Consensus on the meeting space, conference space, convention space, civic and event center. Was, was that the top priority? Um, basically, from what I understand, <clears throat> what I remember was that there was quite a few people that said, you know, we, we need a place to, um, you know, have the balls here in Jacksonville, for example. That was one of the things mentioned, I believe. Um, you know, we are looking at, um, I think here in short order, I think the bids will be due back in for the Sturgeon City building. There's some people, uh, you know, there's a thought that that may serve the need. And I'm not sure what that need is for sure. And, and you know, I'm sure there's some people say, well, that's going to be too big. Some people say that's not big enough. Um, but that's one of the things that the, the committee members kind of expressed was, hey, having some location such as a conference center, uh, conference space for civic events. So I, th that's I, I think the, if I, if I may add, there was a concern. And a couple of people talked about how they had gotten some group together like an alumni association or whatever, and they had to go out of town because there wasn't a place big enough to hold, say, 500 people right. to meet right. and, and eat. And I, I'd, I'd like to see us at least, the minimum we could do is probably come up with some kind of database of places and sizes and things they could accommodate so someone can say, okay, this place can do 200, this can do 300, this is what it costs. But and maybe that's a chamber of commerce thing where they come up with a list of you know you need a convention. This is what we've got. This is what we can offer. This is what it costs. You know and who to contact. So that's one of the things we you know they could do to help us out. Chairman, the, uh, yes, I think the was it the sports commission uh, had commissioned a study on on a venue uh, uh, facilities for and I don't know if that report's ever been finished or and and presented or whatever, but um, I know there was some talk in the, in the past several months on that, so, you know, the, 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 uh, certainly some sort of a, something where we could possibly have a, a, an entertainment venue with some sports that may not quite fit a bill for a, a uh, Marine Corps ball, for example, but it might, uh, but somehow we've got to figure some way of, of combining resources and, and see what we can come up with, but uh, as, as the Sturgeon City may be, may be part of the answer. Don't know just yet. So we got plenty of conventions that could come here, and they, and they can't come here now because the only oh, place we have is Marston Pavilion. Right, and and, and you've got another issue too with the with the Marine Corps balls. They really prefer somewhere where they can uh, walk to right. a to a hotel and. We don't have that capability, even with Sturgeon City. I'm not sure what what that's going to bring. Marine Corps ball folks, obviously, if they're you know, if there's alcohol involved, they want somewhere to go close rather than having to drive or do whatever. So manage that with some type of uh, uh, transport system between you know groups. I mean, if if you're managing that, you can target which hotels you go to offer shuttle services from one place to the other and be able to do that without you know having to move something in a certain place so there are way there are creative ways to get around things and and I agree with you uh, I guess what I what I'm saying about that when I was talking about a database or a collection of what we have is that when we can see everything we've got and what it holds and how much it costs we'll know right away we'll say well gosh we got a lot of places for 200 people to meet, but nothing for 400 or nothing for 300. Part of that study, but I don't know that it has been. So. Well, we can look into that and see what we can find out. I know that with the, the Hilton Garden Inn, it'll be here soon. Um, they've got an area that will hold, yeah, it's been a while, I want to say about 300 people sit down, maybe 400. I don't know that it, that may be too big, so please don't quote me on the numbers. And then the um, the other new hotel, which is the was at the courtyard Marriott. Yes, 
Um, but I think it's a similar number. So if there's kind of a point of, well, we need it to be between <coughs> five and 700, we may not have that here. And that may be kind of the problem. I don't know. But we'll see what we can find out as far as the, um, the listing, you know, the number of people with tables and chairs versus not tables and chairs. So. All right, just keep okay. that in uh, back of your mind or front of your mind as we move forward um, in 2017 on how we can advance the caring community here in Jacksonville. Sounds good. Thank you. Is this something that um, you're looking at doing any type of a special workshop getting together on? We certainly can. I mean, because usually when we get in that kind of setting, it's a little bit more informal. You know, we, we have a chance to kind of sit around and, talk, you know, bat back and forth the ideas that we've done in the past. We you certainly know, can. Like with downtown development, you know, with uh, Newbridge Street, some of the ideas we have with uh, some of the how to dress that up. So we I think it's a great opportunity for us to meet then. So we might want to look at that, you know, just uh, to bring us together in a very informal basis on a workshop. And if it means bringing in uh, maybe city council who can get involved too. And, and we all sit down and meet. All right. Be nice. And, and, and <clears throat> along those lines, of what, would it be also possible to bring in at least one member of the youth council? Um, I don't think it hurts to have a, a good young mind. Right. Younger mind. <laughs> Thank you. Coming president, he was in attendance the other night. So Did somebody like that. Or I mean, y'all had a great meeting. Unfortunately, I got stuck at the office. I couldn't get there. I know we had talked about that before, my concerns. But... Uh, Sometimes those five o'clock meetings, it's tough for me to get out of my office. But uh, anyway, y'all had a great meeting. But, uh, you know, so let's just keep it, let's keep the ball rolling, you know, and let's maybe have a little informal workshop and not as big as that level, but we start bringing it in and start working on those things. So it's like everything, it's, it's all about planning and preparation, and then we can implement, <coughs> you know, the ideas that come out of that. Be, okay, good. I was very impressed with how many of the youth council was there. It was very nice. I they added a lot to the conversation. They did. To every table as well. I mean, they did a really good job. Great group, great group of young adults that were there. Uh, you know, the senior group was well represented too. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> right. right. Yeah, there's but, a few of us seniors. Well, <laughs> well, I covered it all, but at the same time, you know, we need to include our youth because they are the future of this town. Okay, and then when you exclude them, uh, then they feel like they don't have a part. You know, and, and they want to be a part. I think they really do. They and, do and we need to embrace so. that. You know, so sometimes I know they think, well, we look at them as older adults that they don't know. You know, no, you can't shun that because they have some great ideas, you know, and how things are going to evolve because things don't stay stagnant. That's how this town does not grow if we stay stagnant. All right. Well, we'll move on to agenda item D. Okay. <clears throat> to kind of advance some of that, um, the, the art aspect, uh, like I mentioned earlier, great timing. Uh, some of you may have seen this. It's a very similar presentation to what I presented to City Council and something that you'll see next month. But uh, recently there was a grant program that was applied for and we received the grant monies and part of it's going to be used for a um, public art program and, and staff identified basically trying to come up with a way for murals in the downtown area. So we've talked about a couple of different ideas and we're going to present you with kind of what we've come up with, but we'd like any input that you may want to provide. And, and um, then we'll be back in front of the board next month with a proposed text change and also a map amendment because <coughs> based on some of the logistics, we see that there's going to be a need for an overlay district, basically identify where murals could and could not go, and then some um, criteria on how murals would be installed just from a maintenance standpoint. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But as I stated, we believe that this will advance the caring community that was identified at the annual summit. Uh, we believe that a, an art program in downtown will help with the downtown revitalization. Um, sometimes when you create a program like this, you need to establish uniform standards that um, ensures that it's kind of done equally and, 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 and well done. We believe that it, and along with assisting downtown revitalization, will draw visitors to downtown. <clears throat> And then, like I mentioned, there's going to be that little caveat to where if they decide to go through the Arts Commission, um, there'll be grant monies and it'll probably be capped by how much you can get, two or $5,000 to, um, to go towards having a mural installed if you're interested in doing that. So one of the problems that we identified is that currently our Unified Development Ordinance defines mural-type signage. 
And that's basically something that advertises uh, sales and products of the business that's located where the mural is painted. Uh, maximum 20% coverage, we identified that may be a problem, it may be too small. So what we would like to do is, would be to remove the standard, get rid, of, get rid of allowing mural type signage, and there's still plenty of different signage opportunities in the downtown, and then create a new standard for murals specifically. And we'll get into the signage aspect of that here in a minute as far as with the mural goes. As I mentioned, we would create an overlay district that would clearly identify where murals would be within the downtown. Um, some criteria associated with the uh, standards for murals would be a border around the mural, um, limitations on animation or lighting, um, and also the, how you install the, the wall prep, the type of paint, and a maintenance program. So currently, the areas that, um, that we had identified for the, the downtown overlay, and it may expand, and if there's an area on here that, that we haven't in, included that we may want to consider adding, uh, by all means, please let us know that this is just kind of where we had come up with where we believed uh, the two central parts of downtown where there's some available wall space where on the sides, not on the fronts, of buildings, and I'll get into that in a moment, uh, for the overlay. So um, I'm going to pause for a second and let the board look at the map, the aerial here. If there's an area that, um, that you see here that you think we need to expand, uh, and if not, uh, maybe between now and next month, if there's something where uh, between now and the meeting moving forward, if you say, oh, well, hey, we saw that there was a, a spot that would be, you know, a good location for a mural, that should be considered, we can certainly amend this overlay boundary as part of the adoption process. This was just kind of where staff identified uh, the overlay should be located. So we're going to move forward now. Um, we can send you a copy of this if you'd like, um, and if not, maybe in the next couple of couple of uh, weeks, you can tour downtown and say, "Oh, that looks like a good spot," and you know, make sure that we have that identified when we bring this back to you next month. Now, you're saying it would be primarily on the sides of building as opposed to the facade front. The language we have written, they would be prohibited on the front facade, so it would have to be a sidewall. Okay. okay. So I think the one that was identified in our downtown master plan, uh, the 2007 Lawrence Group plan, and the wall that probably is one of the most um, notable downtown is the one right there on the, the old Sprint building. Yeah, well, it's not going to... So everybody knows the building I'm talking about, the big brick three-story building that's um, right there where the road kind of jogs around there at, at New Bridge Street. And I think somehow someone would have to determine what constitute art as opposed to graffiti. I think that there's going to be some standards that you'll see here in a moment that will handle that concern. So moving on past the... Um, <clears throat> The, the specific boundary uh, locations would be on the side of buildings. And uh, if there's a situation that um, has a unique setting, they could also um, bring that forward to staff and, and the development services director may approve something that's a unique setting. Basically, the murals would have to be installed and the material listed in the UDO would have to be followed. Uh, which deals with wall prep, quality of paint, et cetera. And I know that some of this I'm repeating because I've gotten ahead of myself. Um, if you have applying directly to brick when it's a painted on application, um, standards for that. Maintenance plan, because one of the things that we're worried about is, okay, they may deteriorate, so we need to have a maintenance plan in place and a maintenance cycle. And basically because it'll be in the zoning ordinance, because we talked about do we put it in the zone or the UDO, we put it in the ordinance or do we let the Arts Council take care of it? We felt that if it's in the, the Unified Development Ordinance, at least it gives us an opportunity to cite uh, code violation if they're not maintained. So if it's deteriorated more than 20% of the area, 
then it would be a, a code violation and we would put them on notice that they have to correct um, the deterioration. Uh, we would also list uh, annual inspections. So if we have five of them, we will go out there annually just to make sure that they are not deteriorating. So coming back to your question, Mr. Keys, uh, it's going to be permitted <coughs> theme. So it would have to do with Jacksonville history, local military history, local cultural diversity, and they could also, and this comes into the signage piece, that one of the things that we need to determine, which is the consideration part, is that are we okay with a business having sales or products that's happening inside their business, basically a sign, as long as it has Jacksonville history or local military history or cultural diversity. So, you know, are we going to say, no, it cannot have any kind of advertisement? So I'll give you an example. Let's say that uh, a drugstore downtown had a historic theme in with Jacksonville. Let's say an old, you know, an old... Um, piece of art, old photograph from the drugstore from the 1940s, and they wanted to have that painted on the side of the building, and that's the drugstore that they want to paint it on. By definition, they're advertising the product or services happening inside the building. Are we okay with that? And that's something that we'll have to determine, okay, we're going to allow a pharmacy to have a pharmacy mural or a bicycle shop have a bicycle mural, if it's tied in with local military history or Jacksonville history or cultural diversity. So if there's a way to kind of marry those two together, one of the themes with the business or product that's happening, is that going to be okay? So that's one of the things that um, will be part of this, whether we include or exclude. So <laughs> more than likely we will include it to allow it unless the planning board or city council has opposition to that. So. Uh, basically, the approval process, they would submit a zoning permit, and they would go through the application process. Uh, the owner and or, or, I'm sorry, the owner and tenant would have to approve. So if I own the building and Reggie is the tenant, I can't just do it because I own the building, because if I'm going to do something that may be in conflict with my tenant, both players need to be able to sign on that application. Now, if I own the building and I own the business, well, I'm one and the same. So, you know, I would make application or if somebody else wants to make application, I have to agree to it if I'm the owner. They'll provide a conceptual drawing, they'll list what they're gonna use for materials, and provide a narrative explaining how it is in compliance with the themes. That would be considered by Development Services Director and staff, and uh, we would have consultations as needed. And then if there's any appeals, it would go through the normal appeals process to the Board of Adjustment. Um, as I stated, we had a city council workshop. We're treating this tonight as a planning board workshop. And then we would bring back an actual text amendment, the city council, I'm sorry, the planning advisory board and city council in February. So kind of just the overall framework. Next month, you'll see kind of how we're writing that into the code. Uh, this is getting into the grant selection process. This will be the part that's kind of handled through the Arts Commission because we have been working side by side with Cindy Edwards and the folks at the Arts Council. And that would be for if you want to go through the grant selection process. Um, they'll basically call for artists. They'll have a submission deadline. A panel will review the artist and they'll have interviews and then say, hey, you've been selected to perform um, mural paintings in downtown and um, for those that go through the grant process. Now, if I own a building, I can go through this grant process if I want to get money and go through that program, or if I want to hire my own, I can have my own artist paint on it, but I still have to go through the same application process either way. It's just there's some money available here and there's not money available here. And an extra layer for those grant monies that you've got to go through the Arts Commission would be awarded, zoning permit issued, the initial funds would be distributed, the mural would be completed, and then a final payment uh, would occur with the grant selection or with the grant uh, program, and then we'd have a ribbon cutting event for those that go and use the grant program. So 
that's all that I have tonight, and uh, we will codify that and bring that to you for consideration next month. If there's any um, thoughts or input, be happy to have that at this time. Um, so that Has we can... anybody come up with ideas of what they'd like to see in a mural? From my perspective, we have seen examples of how other cities and towns have done these. Uh, one of the ones that we've talked about here is Lake Placid, Florida, that they have all kinds of different murals. <clears throat> I don't think it really follows a theme. I think they just allow murals. And you may have a rainbow. You may have a, uh, you know, fish jumping out of the pond. I mean, it's just there's, they allow them based on that. We have tried to focus on, make them a focal point for the themes that we identified. I've seen some renderings that is just kind of concepts that the bicycle gallery, for example, there was a military group that paratrooped out of planes with bicycles. So you could imagine a plane on the wall with paratroopers on bicycles. Apparently that happened back in the days. Um, we've also seen like the pharmacy picture that I used as an example. You know, we've seen some things where just kind of some ideas and I don't know that it's not, I don't know that it's something that somebody wants to do. I think it was just, hey, here's an example of what it could be. Ryan, Ryan could, a, could a mural use up an entire wall? There's a border requirement, but yes. That's why I ask, because mm -hmm. I could conceivably see someone coming up with a mural that from a distance, when you look at the mural and the existing landscape around it, would give the impression of a total change of what something looks like. In other words, they have blended their mural in with the existing trees and the tree line mm -hmm. and the skyline so that when you stand back and look at it, you get a totally different view of what was there. It may even yeah. be something historical. But if you have to have a border, you would probably lose that capacity. So my question was, why did we require a border? We actually we talked about that. That's a great point. And it's, there's a border that's required in the kind of the, the jello code that we've drafted so far, but there's a provision, I believe, that where we said that somebody could apply, oh, sorry, somebody could apply for, um, if their drawing needed to extend beyond that border, there's a provision that we have planned to be written in, written in place to allow that to be considered. One, one comment yes. with, 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 with the area that we've indicated, there would be no opportunity then for, let's say out in Yop Road area where you've got large walls on the, on the Lowe's building and the Walmart building. Um, if, if they applied, would that be appropriate? Could an exception be made for that? Based on the overlay, it would have to be within the overlay. Okay. And that's one of the things we talked about. I mean, we're trying to use um, one of the benefits of being in downtown, you know, that we want to okay. draw people to downtown, okay. not where they're already being drawn to okay. based on okay. the traffic numbers and things like that. Okay. So this would be a downtown program specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, that, that's not to say that in one or two or five years from now, Say, hey, look, you know, it's done really well. Do we want to try and look at another area? I mean, it's, it's a code. It can change. But this focus is for the downtown area specifically. That's all that I have. Swansboro okay. has that one big hey, you're right. mural. All right, so we will move on to uh, our reports. Okay. No, no reports, no reports. All right. Any other uh, items we need to discuss? Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I just need a motion to adjourn. So move. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much.